I recently released a video on Erdogan's Purful Division of Nature uh, using a symbolic reading of the Days of Creation. And I'd like to use this model today to explain uh, the relationship between emergence and emanation, and especially how this maybe allows us to see a deep continuity of relevance realization of the chain of being. And as I said, I'm going to use Erdogan's scheme here but I will depart from him in uh, a few places and I'll try to mention this as I go on. So uh, let's dive uh, right in. Let's recall in Eugenia's first day of creation, which, you know, let's remember that this is a uh, symbolic reading of Genesis that indicates not a temporal sequence of events, but something that happens ontologically at every instant. So at every instant, God creates the heaven and the earth and everything in between. And at every instant, God is resting, God is not exhausted by this, and all of creation comes back to God. Um, yeah. so, so, so let's get going. The first thing that happens ontologically at every moment is that from God, there emanates heaven and earth, uh, the primordial causes. And right away, I differ from Erogen here, because he will say that the earth that is without form and void, uh, he will see it not so much as potential, but as all of the, f all of the forms, uh, it's not really different possibilities per se, but more the, the abstract form of what will take place. But I, I won't talk too much about it because it's not the way I'd like to talk about this uh, in this video today. The way I, I prefer, and I think this is uh, what the Pedro brothers, among others, uh, are trying to, to get at, is that heaven contains the invisible, the abstract, the, the patterns, uh, the laws of physics, for instance. What, what is abstract? Uh, the, the structural fun functional organizations of things, for instance, those are in heaven. Those are uh, the the patterns which will regulate the world. And from the other end, the earth, that is without form and void, is the potential, is the real possibilities. Uh, and we, we actually need this also in our ontology, even if you want to be a naturalist, because you need the notion that there is real possibility to talk about evolution, where there is a real possibility of you know, selecting different organisms uh, and so on. And you also, I think, need it to make the best sense of what we see at the lowest levels of reality, where there is sort of just quantum probabilities there. We can see this, I think, as real potential. And further, so this was the first day of creation, where uh, God, from God emanates the heaven and the earth, the primordial causes, which will cause everything. And uh, then on the end of day one, and also throughout day six, God uses heaven and the earth to create uh, the world, everything that exists in between the heaven and the earth. And this is a, a marriage of emergence and emanation between heaven and the earth. So pat the patterns in heaven will constrain, uh, will will emanate down towards the potential, and from the potential, things will, will uh, emerge. And this, at every level of reality, there will be a, a, a marriage, a friction between those two, which will cause entities to actually exist. So, for instance, uh, the fact that you can take, let's say, at the lowest levels of reality, that there is some quantum field there, and uh, we also know that there are laws which will predict, for instance, that, well, in this instance, uh, there is this chance, this probability, that uh, this quantum field will uh, create a, an electron, for instance. And uh, when this actually does take place, when the, the actual pattern of the electron takes place on the field of possibility. This is a marriage of heaven and earth. This is the creation of an actual electron, for instance. Uh, so this is a mix of emanation from, from the laws and, uh, emanation, uh, and emergence from the possibilities of the quantum. And this keeps going at higher levels of being. For instance, when uh, a, a, a cell uh, is trying to, in, let's say, take in some molecules to feed itself, you know, that, that cell has tons of possibilities, tons of real possibilities, uh, which uh, it could do. It could try to grab this, it could move this way, it could, it could expel some, some uh, molecules, take, take, take in some others. So there's all kinds of possibilities which the cell can, can take, but the structural functional organization of the cell, its, its form, will constrain what it will actually do. The cell won't just, let's say, dissolve or whatever. It will do something very precise of, let's say, uh, spilling away this molecule and letting this one that it needs come in. So the, there is, again, you know, an emanation from the forms, from the structure of the cell, which will constrain the possibilities of the cell. And in the constraining of that potential, of all that the cell could do, 
there is the actual cell that actually survives and actually does things in the world. Okay, and if, you, if we keep going even higher, there's, some, there's this going on in, in humans as well. When I make a, a decision, uh, there is a, I constrain the possibilities that I have in, in my body. You know, there's all kinds of things I could do at every instant. You know, if, especially if you look at all the complexity in the brain, at every instant I could do so many different things. You know, I could, I could say uh, countless sounds, I could move countless ways, I could stay still, I could think about this or think about that. So there's all kinds of things I could do. I have all kinds of, of, of potential. There's all kinds of, of emergence that is possible uh, within me. But I constrain this with the actual structures that are in my brain, the actual forms that hold in my mind. And I decide to constrain all the potential that is available to me by saying these very words that I'm saying. So I exist in this instant by a marriage of uh, emergence from the potential that I have and the constraint, the emanation of the, the actual forms that, that I think. And we could go even higher in groups of persons, for instance. Uh, this is something which John and I discussed in our second discussion. You can go have a look at it. It's towards the, the beginning of the video. And you know, in certain practices, you can clearly see that new things, new patterns, new, new patterns, new forms will emerge in, will emerge in groups which will then emanate in ways that were not previously planned. So this, this is abstract as I said it, but le, le, imagine you're in a setting where let's say you're with I don't know, five, 10 people and you're being honest about well, how you feel and you're also opening yourself up. You're leaving potential. You're leaving potential to be influenced by what the others will say. And in doing this, if the different people are managed to coordinate well, there will appear patterns, there will emerge patterns forms, structural functional organizations, which will reveal to the individuals things that are not reducible to themselves, things which the individual people wouldn't have figured out. Uh, so there will be a marriage between the potential of the group and the form, the structures that are holding in that distributed cognition. So this, this can make genuine, genuine groups exist. And we could uh, take tons of other examples, but I think I've said enough to give you the basic idea of how you can see the whole creation as a marriage between emanation from heaven, from the forms, and emergence from the, the potential of the earth. And now I want to move back to Eugenia. Let's remind ourselves that for Eugenia, the seventh day of creation, namely God, God's rest, indicates that God not only creates, but also does not create. At every instant, God creates the world, but also does not create the world. God remains inexhausted by this. And ultimately, for Arjuna, this is God drawing the world in one, in himself, holding the world together, because nothing can exist uh, outside of God. And this is related to the fact that at the end of the first six days of creation, God sees what he has made and uh, saw that it was good. That ultimately, God creates the world so that he can bring it back to himself, so that he can, he can look at it and see himself in it, see oneness and creation in it. Okay. Uh, so what uh, I see this as implying is that on the one end, you have emanation from God towards creation, but you also have emergence back from creation towards God. Because God creates real potential, real possibilities in the world. And from the marriage of heaven and earth, from the mix of forms and potential in the world, real things will, will, will be created, will happen. And real, there, there will be real emergence of, of a world in there, which can emerge back to God, which God can unify all in himself. And I see this as pointing towards a deep continuity of relevance realization across the different levels of being. Uh, let's remind ourselves, in John Verwicki's terminology, relevance realization is the constraining of possibilities, of infinite possibilities, combinatorial explosive reality into down to something uh, finite, something more limited. And I'm not gonna try to, let's say, claim that there's an identity in the relevance realization going out at, at those different levels, or that, uh, let's say, there is consciousness at this level or, or not at this other level and so on. But today I just want to talk about the possibility that there is a deep continuity there in the constraining of the potential into something uh, finite at every level of reality. So I'll just use the examples uh, I mentioned earlier in this video. In the case of the electron you know, coming into being from the field of potential, this is a case of something like realness realization where the, the, the the possibilities come down into something finite. Similarly, in the case of the cell, which could do all kinds of things, which has all kinds of possibilities, 
it chooses to do this or that, this is a constraining of possible t down into something phi, something uh, more limited. Similarly, in the case of a human, who chooses from among all the possibilities of what it could do, constraining it in a relentless organization choice. In the case of groups of human as well, we engage in uh, more complex interrelated uh, uh, distributed cognition can, again, take a large set of possibilities, constrain it into something finite by doing group relevance realization. And even at a higher level, in what God does with creation, God has uh, uh, the infinite ground of being that is not uh, exhausted by creation. You always remember God on the seventh day, who is not exhausted by what he creates, who remains an in inexhaustible well of possibility. From all of that possibility, and also what emerges from his creation, God chooses what to emanate, what to uh, do in heaven and in the earth. So as I said, I don't want to, let's say, dive too deep into, let's say, what uh, would constitute consciousness here and there, uh, what would the attributes of God be, and so on and so. Something I'll try to uh, look into later, because this will depend into what sort of theism we want. Uh, I think there are lots of questions who would already be happy with a deep continuity of relationalization. For some others, it would be really important that this is an actual consciousness just like ours, and I don't want to uh, talk about this today. My point was just that if you use especially Erogenous model of creation, you can see a deep continuity of emergence and emanation, of brilliance realization across all the different levels of beings in creation and also between God and creation. So uh, I hope that was useful, guys, and thanks for listening.